One of the many policies of government today, the anti-money laundering policy. Well, over time, with a whole lot going on in the financial sector, now you heard about the police pension fund, the probe also going on there, with the latest uh, cashless policy of the government, FAT, Financial Action Task Force, saying some sort of dissatisfaction about uh, Nigeria's anti-money laundering policy and the whole lot just focuses this time on this policy. And while joining us, you may have seen in the opening montage uh, by Bandili Olusha who is a former bank examiner. Thank you for coming on this morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here on a good Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, one would have thought that, uh, I mean, now that when, when we had that anti money laundering policy, okay. it will solve a lot of problems, help the anti-corruption agencies make their job a lot easier. But from what you've seen, in spite of all of that, I mean, the pension problem raises a lot of questions, it, right. as though it makes rubbish of that policy. But is that the case, really? Yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. Um, we have failed, as far as money laundering is concerned. Because with all these revelations coming up in billions, the banks are supposed to be like a check. And uh, you see, laundered money is called dirty money. Why? Because it does not improve productivity. And if people get money easily through rent activities and all that, definitely productivity cannot go up. And um, essentially, most of these funds pass through the banks. And the bankers are aware. And why are they not talking? Because they are compromised. That's the truth. And uh, because there's no way somebody will come and lodge two billion in your bank and you don't ask questions. You, you, you have to investigate and find out that it was... Uh, properly disbursed from somewhere. You have to get to the source. Yeah, but is it possible that they don't ask questions? Or is it that, yeah, they ask questions, but if politicians tell you, well, you better do this or else I, I could threaten some part of your activity or your operations, and, and so they're cowed. <coughs> Can that also play out? Yeah, it's all part of risk management. The banks are under pressure, so they, they, they want deposits at all costs. You know, so they don't mind the source. But if actually they, are, they do their work, they are supposed to check all this. We will be so much afraid to take money, laundered money, into the bank. But since these banks don't, don't ask questions, people are just uh, doing it the way they like. What, and about, the, what, what about the bank examiners? Mm. Yes, very good. Uh, the, the bank examiners are also supposed to raise uh, uh, some queries. But so many times, some of these funds, funds are camouflaged <coughs> under companies. But w what I'm trying to say is this. The bankers know their customers. Now, if somebody goes to open a government account, and there are so many government accounts, government is not aware of, I must say this, and they need to clean up the system. Because a lot of people take checks meant for the government and pay to these accounts, and there are the sole signatories all over. So, could, you, could you give us any scenario? Maybe your experience, you don't have to name the banks, but you could just give us, how, how does these things work? How do, does it work? The recent uh, pension fund uh, scam has highlighted this. And if you look at um, so many other activities going on in the, the, the government sector, the FRS in those days, a lot of people used to open <laughs> accounts on behalf of the government. And that's the truth. So many accounts. And the government has to clean up the whole system if, if it really wants to consolidate its revenue. So many accounts that the government is not even aware of. And people open these accounts and all checks are uh, lodged in there and they withdraw and they use it. And that's the truth. And it has been going on for many years. So the government has to clean up. Otherwise, it, there will be a lot of leakages, yeah. and that is what is happening. Yes, sir, Mark, you know, when you go to a bank, you want to open an account, there are certain documents you, you're required to bring. So Certainly. if you go there, maybe you're going to open on the Ministry of XYZ for State A. Aren't you required to bring some documents and some signatories? How can you be the sole signatory to an account opened in the guise that it's a state government's account? Yeah. You know, the, the whole thing, like they always say, is a cabal. And they have people, accomplices, even in the ministries, all over. And they per perfected the process. You know, and it takes them less than two days, fast one, to open government accounts. And, and this is the truth. So many. They have to clean up the system. Especially FRS and state uh, internal revenue uh, authorities, accounts are opened on their behalf. And people just go use it. For example, if you're a company and you want to pay your tax, they will tell you, don't, don't take it to that account, pay it into this bank where they know they have control over. That's what is happening. And because you, you, you thought it's in the name of that particular, maybe, tax, tax board, you would think that you're paying it genuinely into the account. Exactly. You, mean, you will not know. But the bankers, 
the uh, FIRS or the tax officials, whatever, they know that this money is controlled by them. And that, that is why the whole system is so dirty. And when we are talking of money laundering, we have to clean up because dirty money does not improve productivity. And you, you see where this has landed us. How can you look, look at some of the figures being mentioned, 12 billion. But after CBN came up with all of this cleansing with, with the banks where some MDs uh, had to change, one would have thought that banks would be a lot more circumspect in their dealings. But then this pension probe comes up. For if there are laws that say if an individual or a corporate body exceeds a certain <coughs> limit, the bank is supposed to inform the anti-corruption agency. That's true. So how does it become so hard to do that? And how come that is not traced yeah. if and when that happens? Yeah, that's a good question. If there's incentive for me to compromise, why would I bother? And that, that is truth. You see, these people have accomplices in the banks. And they can't do it alone. And um, they, 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 nobody knows how they share it. You know, once funds come in, they share it. And in most cases, if you go to these accounts, the, the balances don't last. When you say they share it, they, they make sure it doesn't get to the limit? Or? No. They, 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 they share it among all those who have interest. Wow. Yeah. And, and it doesn't last. You know, it comes in, two, three days, it's gone. So if, uh, as an examiner, you go there, what you just see is uh, probably a very small balance, and you, except you go further to ask for the statement of account, and you see, it, it takes a lot of uh, patience for you to go that length. Because, obviously, if you look at an account, the balance is this, and it's government account, except you have a kind of power to know that is wrongly opened. You assume you know, everything is okay. Yeah. It's yeah. very interesting that year in, year out, banks get audited as well. Yeah. What if, do, do, do the auditors owe the CBN any responsibility as well, or is it just between them and the banks? Thank you, Mark. That, that, that's a very good one, because one would have thought that with most of these uh, bank executives being probed and sent to uh, prison and so on and so forth, some of these people should have been liable, the, the, the auditors, but no eyebrow has been raised. And it's very serious because no auditing firm has been penalized through all these camps. I well, don't know what is going on. Is it that the banks were so good that they were able to conceal that from the auditors? Um, well, the, 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 the auditors, uh, they, they, they go uh, to do their work and Sometimes uh, they, they see they raise queries, and it's the banks that will answer the queries, and they always answer it perfectly. They, they, they always have answers to all questions. You see, except the auditors are really determined, you know, to go the full length. They may just give up at this, because he who pays the piper dictates the tune. So, so the auditor cannot go to any length. He only goes to the limits that they want. Exactly, to. The, the, the board of the bank, and if the board has compromised, then. But that, that, that's why it's interesting, yeah. because if, for instance, and the auditor had a responsibility to the CBN as well, say we audit this bank and we also have to submit a copy of the report that we have to the Central Bank of Nigeria, do they have that kind of relationship? They do. They do? They do. <coughs> but there's a way um, they beautify the report. And even if it gets to uh, CBN, except they send examiners, you know, they, they, most of these things are concealed, and that is why people are always shocked when a scam breaks up. That where where have you been? And all these things uh, were happening in the system. Because that's the issue. When I open an account, you take my residential address. When a company opens an account, you also do the same. Yes. Before you get an account officer, don't you have a department in the bank that goes to verify? that particular address to see if it does exist? They are supposed to do that because under your know your customer uh, law, the banks are supposed to do their customers, but how many banks know their customers? Because if they don't go out, that is when someone can say, I'm X company or when you're not, and you have an account in the company's name and you just divert funds meant for that particular agency or company. Exactly. There's a problem there because the banks are not doing what they should do. They are expected to go verify the addresses, know so many details about the customers, so that if there's any outlier, they will know. If there's any event happening outside the norm, they will know. But in most cases, they don't do these things. And that, that is why you see billions passing through the system. The banks actually are culpable, believe what, you me. I what, won't hide this. What does this say about the integrity of our entire banking sector? 
Yes, um, there, there needs to be a serious cleanup. Believe me, because we are not happy. It's embarrassing to the country. But wasn't that the cleanup was started in two thousand and two thousand and uh, nine? Nine, yes. Yes, um, it, it, they, they still need to go further. Believe you me, because the, the bankers are very smart, and if they are to do their work, they, they can help the government check corruption. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. They can help the go because. If you take money, you are not likely going to keep it in your house. You put it somewhere. And if they know their customers very well, they will, they will ask you questions and maybe raise queries and inform the relevant uh, agencies. Do you see that happening? Well, the, the, the central bank has a responsibility to make sure that all these scams passing through the banks are checked. Otherwise, at the end of the day, the, the, the system will hemorrhage and there will be nothing left for generations to come. Because we really have to look at this critically and uh, see how we can fix it. Because some already complain that it is only those who you would ordinarily call uh, Nigerians now. I'm talking about the ordinary Nigerians that are subjected to, to all of these uh, checks. For instance, you go, you just want to collect uh, maybe 200, 300,000, you stand before a camera. But you don't get to see people who take such billions do all of that. And besides, do they actually have the picture of that man or woman making those transactions? They don't. Now, the, the, the poor man is always on the losing end. If, if he wants to withdraw 200, 300,000, he's subjecting to so many uh, uh, questions. Uh, some people will say if you have 200, 300,000, you cannot qualify as poor. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it might be a gratuity, it might be something else, somewhere. So sometimes they come across uh, such funds, you know, but the average Nigerian is scared of the banks. Mm. Why? Because they don't want to go through all the protocol. Go, go, what's, what's your, your maiden name? What's, they, they subject them to all these. Yes, interesting. I'll tell you something. <laughs> I mean, Sulaiman, just to buttress your points yeah. as to the ordinary person, you know, I went to a bank recently to get a form to open an account and the requirements is baffling. They want to know your nickname, if you have a BB <laughs> pin, you know. I'm like, <laughs> since well, when? Why you know? E exactly. It's interesting. But, you know, do they have the same set of requirements for, say, um, corporate entities? Well, you see, normally before they open these accounts, they, 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 they tell them the intention that, look, they, they get an accomplice. Because without an insider, it can't succeed. Believe you me. They get an accomplice inside the bank so that one covers them you know and a, a, a lot of requirements are set aside and it, it's so unfortunate you, you, because now you can see pensioners dying and some people are using up their funds that, 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 that can instigate a crisis look at what happened in greece yesterday a man shot himself just because they told his pension dead you see so these pensioners are groaning they, they, are, they are crying Brandon, how can we stop this? Now, something comes to mind here again. If someone can actually move fiscal cash uh, up to 2 billion naira, what then will happen when we do that electronically without any trace? Well, w w what, is, uh, what it means is that now the scale may even get higher and it may be faster. You, you know, because. Um, higher and faster? Yes. Because now with electronic transfer, things can be done in the Jiffy. And um, for cash, the body of carrying cash is always there. You know, but for most of these um, cashless uh, policies, things can be done very fast. It, it can be done on your laptop, it can be done anywhere internet, and before you know it, the, the, the fraud has succeeded. Then how can we stop that? How can we stop all of this? Yes, it, it can be stopped. And the central bank has a lot of uh, work to do, believe you me, because so many scams in the system. And you see, the banks actually are not doing what they are supposed to do. What they are doing right now, they are just moving funds around the country. They are not making things happen. Look, look at the real sector; it's dead. And the man has been shouting. So many agencies have been shouting. We don't have access to funds. And you, you look at other uh, agencies set up, like the Bank of Industry. What are they doing? What are they doing? Why are we in this comatose uh, situation as a country? You mean and you don't see what they do? All the <laughs> fantastic no, stuff? We, we, don't, we don't feel it. Young, Believe me. We don't feel it. Entrepreneurs who get some kind of a lease from them? Yeah. And assistance? No, I, I take time sometimes to meet some of these entrepreneurs and they tell me the harrowing experience they pass through. And that is why they find it difficult to pay back. So the, the, the whole system has to change. And we have to be very serious. 
or, or, or otherwise corruption is going to eat us up. Okay, but it's different if they, they got th this infrastructural challenge as opposed to meeting the requirements to get funds from those banks of industries and the rest of them. So are you talking about the infrastructural provision, which is perhaps not sufficient, or the requirements that they have to meet, for instance? Yeah, the requirements. The requirements. They, they, they give them very difficult uh, conditions to meet. But, and, but you and know, that is, yeah. sorry, yeah, you, you, you just, you know, s narrowed it down to the requirements. You have to also understand that a host of these companies or banks are operating in an environment too that is hostile. I mean, it's not like I see they're getting slush funds from somewhere. They too are in it to make money, and not all Nigerians have been proven to be honest. So sometimes they too also have to go the extra mile to make sure that they're going to get their money back. How does it work? Yeah, and once you know your customer very well, you know your customers that are working hard, you know your customers that are serious, you get into their business, understand their business, and based on that, you, you, you fund them. Can you know a customer completely? I mean, if they're having cases of, I've been doing business with somebody, and all of a sudden, maybe when we hit jackpot, the person flees. Haven't there been cases like that? It's possible you know your customer completely, because... Completely? Yeah, it's possible, very possible. How? Now, you are aware, you know his family, you know his, uh, the, the customer's children, you know everything about the, 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 the customer. What he does, if he has a small problem, you, you go there to help him, and so on and so forth. It's possible. No, but if human nature is unpredictable, how do you know him completely? You know him to a certain extent. Well, that, that, that is what risk management is all about, believe you me. If we follow risk management principles in this country, if, uh, customers will find it difficult to, to default because you even advise them, you, you give them help where they need help. Sometimes the banks connect their customers and, and so on and so forth. But they are not doing all this. But with the advent of this uh, cashless policy, which they are also bringing up, and as part of the laws, the requirements for anti money laundering laws to kick in, one wonders uh, again if you could tie it to any particular experience, why are you pessimistic that with this cashless policy? Monies could go quicker and faster without any detection. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I said. Because anything done electronically is faster. You don't have the burden of carrying cash or somebody asking you questions. Yeah, but electronically, would, would nobody they, asks you any questions. With the requirements that banks are seeking now, your BB pain uh, and all those, one can assume that, okay, maybe they want to take it one step further to check all of this. Well, recently, MasterCard and Visa, they alerted the world that, look, there are security breaches in our system. So you can imagine, if in the UK and in the US they are shouting, what happens in Nigeria? A, 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 lot, a lot of funny things happen, even right now through the ATM. You know, even from the boys that load the cash, sometimes the, the, where they're supposed to load 1,000, they load 500. Uh, that, 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 that's where all these problems come from, from a loading point. You know, because the ATM machine sometimes don't recognize um, the, the bills. They just count them. You know, so these are some of the things the central bank has to look at. Because if you have somebody loading who is dubious, okay, he says, I want to load 1,000, and in between he puts uh, 500 Naira notes, how would the machine detect that? But so that problem is there. What about the capacity of the central bank? You, you think that, well, at the moment, do they need any strengthening or from what you've seen, having uh, works with them, do they, is there any area they need to strengthen themselves concerning this policy? Yeah, continuous screening. And continuous training because if you allow uh, the bankers to as outsmart you, then you'll be behind them, you'll be pushing them, and th that is what is happening right now. And I'm um, uh, talking sincerely here that the bankers somehow are ahead of the regulators, and that is why you see all these big sums of money being mismanaged here and there. You hear of billions, 300 billion, and all that, and all that. If the uh, regulators catch up with the bankers, then it will be minimized. You know? it, so there's a lot it can of problems. All, it cannot all be bleak. Definitely, some things can be rescued or salvaged if you say they just do necessary things, the CBN. Yeah, yeah, it, it, a lot can be done. It can be salvaged. You know, if they, they are sincere and if um, th there are penalties, sometimes bankers should be jailed. You see what happened in the, in the USA. Most of those guys went to jail, but in Nigeria, they, they, they keep on, you know, uh, giving them soft landing. That, that, that's the issue. But, but, but all, all those uh, Enron guys, they're, they're all in jail. So we, we should not just uh, lower the standard. We should give it the, the right uh, penalty.